graph the following functions. All right, let's take a look at the first function here, h of x is equal to five. This function is essentially a constant, right? y equals to five is basically what we have here. When you graph a function that's equal to a constant, it's basically a horizontal line that passes through the y-axis at the location specified by the constant. So in this case, at five. So if you move on the y-axis up to five, one, two, three, four, five, we get a line that passes through the y-axis there and basically forms a horizontal line. All right, so that'd be the graph essentially of that function h of x is equal to five. So anytime you see a function that's equal to a simple constant, you know it's gonna be a horizontal line. It'll pass through the y-axis at the specified point. All right, now let's look at g of x is equal to x. This is a function that essentially is formed by a polynomial of degree one, right? So g of x equals to x, x is a polynomial of degree one. What do I mean by that? It means that the highest exponent in the polynomial is one on the variable x, right? So if you look at x, its highest power here is just one. Of course, there's only one x and it's to the one power in this case, so it's a very simple function. All right, but once you know this degree is one, then essentially you wanna know that the graph is basically a line of some sort that will have some sort of slope. In this particular case, this is a line that has slope equal to one and y intercept is zero. But regardless of that, basically we're looking at a function that looks something like this. And all of these functions that have polynomials to degree one will look something like this graph, right? It'll be a line that has some kind of a slope. Now the line may kind of, instead of increasing as you move left to right, it may decrease as you move left to right. It may be shifted up or shifted down, etc. but it'll always form a line. So any function that is basically made up of a polynomial with degree one will have a graph that looks similar to the graph we have here now. All right, let's take a look at f of x is equal to x squared. This graph forms what we call a parabola. Now a parabola kind of looks like a sort of U or V, right? Moving up, not quite a V, but more like a U. And it basically can open up or down. It can be shifted to the left or right, et cetera, et cetera, right? You can move it all around, but basically that is the idea of a parabola. All right, so you can tell f of x equals to x squared is basically a polynomial function with degree two, right? Because the exponent on this x is two. And that means essentially every time you have a function that's polynomial in nature and it has highest degree two, you're going to expect it to look like a parabola of some sort. All right, then we have this function h of x is equal to x to the third power, right? h of x is equal to x to the third power. Well, that forms a graph that we call a snake typically. So what we mean by that is it kind of does like this on this side and down like that on that side, right? So the snake graph again, is characteristic of a function that has degree three, right? And it has that degree three, you expect to see something like that. Actually, we can even go further to say any polynomial function with that highest degree power equal to an odd number kind of looks a little bit like this, right? And likewise, before we saw the parabola here having that degree of two, right? It's sort of also true that any polynomial function with highest degree that's equal to an even number kind of also looks a little bit like the parabola, right? But either way, regardless, something like h of x is equal to x to the third is going to have this snake looking graph. And that snake graph, again, it can be moved around and switched essentially, but Basically, if you have a polynomial function where its degree is equal to three, you're going to expect it to look something like this. All right, now let's look at the next one, g of x is equal to the square root of x. So this graph actually looks like half of a parabola on its side. So in other words, you'll have sort of an anchoring here at the center, at the origin, and then you'll have this graph opening up that way for g of x here. Now all graphs that have a square root of x as the main component of the graph will look something like this, right? Half of a parabola on its side. Now you can of course pick this up and move it around or reflect it across the x-axis, reflect it across the y-axis, et cetera, et cetera. But basically it'll look something like this if its main component is the square root of x. All right, then our next function is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So this forms like a v, so it's kind of like a parabola, except for it comes to a sharp point. It doesn't have that rounded, smooth kind of U look to it. Instead, it looks like a V. So it's almost like two lines kind of emanated from the same original point, right? So that's sort of the idea behind the absolute value function. And again, any function that has this as its predominant feature is going to look something like this graph here with the V shape, right? So in this particular case, it's opening up, kind of like, you know, a V opening upward. It could also open downward. You know, it could also be shifted to the right or to the left, et cetera, et cetera. All those changes are possible. 
it could be stretched or compressed, but in the end, any function that has its predominant piece being the absolute value of x, we're going to have a shape that looks similar to this. All right, and lastly, we're going to have this g of x equals one over x function. So one over x is basically a peculiar function where as we get close to zero, we end up with an asymptote. So you can't put zero into the function here because then you'll have one over zero, which is undefined. So what's gonna happen is as you get close to zero, things start to look funny. Now also, if x is something that's really large, like infinity, right, then one over x would approach zero, correct? So expect the graph to do something kind of like this. And then on the negative side, for the negative x's, it'll do something kind of like this. So I haven't done the best of jobs here to show that it's hugging the y-axis, but that's kind of what the graph looks like. It almost looks like two Nike swooshes or something, right? And uh, that's basically the look of the graph. And you can kind of test this out just with some points in your head. You know, if you think about putting, you know, say 10, x equals 10, you'll get one-tenth as the value. So out at 10 on the x-axis, you'll get something that's maybe one-tenth high over here. Now, again, my drawing is not done very well, but you get the idea. As x goes towards infinity, the value of one over x will approach zero, right? And likewise, as you get close to, say, zero, you're gonna be putting a very tiny number, right, into the expression one over x. It'll end up making the function much larger, right? So that's why we have this shooting up towards infinity here at this part of the graph. Likewise, over here, as we move close to zero, it'll shoot down towards negative infinity if you're moving from the negative side of the number line. And again, it'll also, again, hug that number line over here. It's approaching zero on the axis because if you put something like negative 2,000 in there, then the value of the fraction is negative one over 2,000, which is a value that's very tiny. All right, so either way, the graph here, again, kind of looks like these two Nike swooshes. And anything you see that's in that structure of one over x, you know, in that general pattern, it's gonna look something like this. Again, you can move these little swooshes around the graph, change where the asymptote occurs, but essentially the function, if it's a rational function that's simple like one over x, it's going to look something like this. All right, so the idea behind this video is to again give you this idea of a library of functions or to show you sort of general patterns that exist. By learning to recognize these patterns, it'll make you able to graph functions with just a couple of points, right? Something like, you know, f of x is equal to, let's say, x squared plus Two. You know, if we know that this is generally going to look like a parabola because of the x squared piece, right, then we can just figure out what effect this plus two will have on the graph and then sort of graph the function with either one or two points or maybe even perhaps just one point, right? So for example, if I know right where this function starts, I can get a sketch of where it is located, right? So I happen to know this function will actually start here, right, at two on the y-axis and opens up. So I can sort of do the graph very quickly like that. Now, of course, it's not precisely graphed, but it gives you an idea of what to expect, what you will see basically when you finish the graph successfully.